Welcome to step four. Implement perimeter security. Trusted versus untrusted zones. A most basic concept in perimeter security. The most basic concept in perimeter security is the trusted versus untrusted zones. The trusted zone is everything inside of your network and the untrusted zone is anything outside of your network, that is, the Internet. Best practice demands that we'll, there will be only one point on the perimeter where data packets can pass in and out. A firewall is placed at this single point. The firewall's job is to stand at the border and regulate specifically what is allowed in and what is allowed out. Keep it simple. Everything inside your firewall is trusted. Everything outside your firewall is untrusted. Consider adding a third zone, the DMZ. The two-zone architecture is generally sufficient for SOHO, small office, home office setups, while businesses that have servers accessible to the public may add a third zone called the DMZ and place the servers in it. Because these servers may be vulnerable to attacks from the untrusted network, communication from the DMZ to the trusted zone is carefully controlled by the firewall. Where's the DMARC? To get internet access, we need to pay an ISP, Internet Service Provider, to provide that connection. Any equipment necessary for the internet connection that is owned by you is called CPE, Customer Premises Equipment. Anything outside of the CPE, of the CPE is owned by the ISP, the Internet Service Provider. The exact connection point is called the DMARC. That is, everything inside of the DMARC is owned by and controlled by you. Anything outside of the DMARC is owned by and controlled by the ISP. The DMARC is important because it specifically defines who is responsible for what. Configure the router. Usually it's the first device where data arrives from the internet. If a packet from the untrusted network to the trusted network arrives, usually the first device it hits is the router at the perimeter. Depending upon the type of internet connection, whether it's T1, cable, or it's, etc., the router may be CPE or it may be owned by the ISP. If the router is CPE, then it is your job to secure it. Securing the router is most often done by using access lists or ACLs. Secure the router with Cisco access lists. Cisco access lists have both standard access lists and extended. Standard ACLs filter solely based on the source IP address of the packet. Extended ACLs offer more functionality. You can filter on source IP address, destination IP address, source port, destination port, plus more. So you may decide what source and destination IP addresses and what source and destination ports are allowed to pass the router and then enforce this with an ACL. Secure the router with strong passwords. Logging into the router, make sure that the access to this is properly secured using passwords. Secure the router with the Cisco one-step lockdown feature and the security audit feature. Cisco has two features that help secure their routers. One-step lockdown feature and the security audit feature. 
you can use one or both of these features in a semi-automated way to secure the router using the guidance provided by Cisco. Now, obviously, you may not have a Cisco router, although the majority probably will based upon the saturation of Cisco in the world. But if you have another router, then you can have similar features based on the brand of router that you have. And lastly, we will configure the firewall. Traffic that is permitted to pass the router next hits the firewall. A firewall is much more granular and powerful a device for controlling traffic in and out than your router. So first we talk about first generation firewall functionality. First generation packet filtering is pretty much the same as the functionality that you get with Cisco standard and extended access lists mentioned above. Packet filtering occurs at, at layers one, two, and three of the OSI reference model. Second generation firewall functionality, stateful packet filtering. Second generation stateful packet filtering occurs at layers one, two, three, and four of the OSI reference model. The addition of layer four, the transport layer, allows the use of connection state. The firewall will record all connections passing through it. Furthermore, it determines if any packet is part of an existing connection, the start of a new connection, or were not part of any connection at all. Here's an example to help you understand the advantages of stateful packet filtering. A typical default firewall setting would be from untrusted to trusted, deny all traffic, but from trusted to untrusted, allow all traffic. You can leave the firewall configured as above and then from the piece from a PC on your LAN, you would find that you are able to go to any website and it works properly. But wait a minute. In order for the website to work properly, the firewall must pass traffic on your LAN to the website, which is trusted to untrusted, which is allowed, and also from the website to your LAN, which is untrusted to trusted, which is denied. So why doesn't the firewall block so why doesn't the firewall block the ladder? Because the firewall knows that the traffic from the website to your LAN is part of an existing connection opened by you. And the firewall is smart enough to assume that this traffic is safe. Now suppose a website on the internet were to try to make a connection to the server to a server behind your firewall. The firewall would stop this traffic as, as it is a new connection. Third generation firewall functionality, application level. Here, filtering occurs at layers one, two, three, four, and seven. The addition of layer seven, the application layer, allows the functionality of deep packet inspection. This allows you to filter by specific criteria for specific applications, such as HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, DNS, etc. This allows you to filter based upon almost any criteria in the packet, giving you extremely fine control. Exactly how much fine control you get with the application layer will be dependent upon the specific abilities of that firewall that you're using. And lastly, we look at additional firewall features. In addition to the above first, second, and third generation firewall functionality, many firewalls include other security features, such as VPN capabilities, Content filtering, which allows, you, which allows you to block end users on your LAN from accessing certain websites. Gateway antivirus, intrusion prevention, 
anti-spyware, and logging and alerts. So even though all of these features are not part of first, second, and third generation firewalls, they are features that many firewalls do give you, and you definitely want to take advantage of those. That is the end of this video. We will see you in step five.